So the main thing that I explain to people and what I start with is helping them to understand what circadian rhythms are and why they're important. So circadian rhythms, circa means around, dian meaning the day. So a circadian rhythm is the rhythm that your body naturally has around the 24 hour day night cycle that we have here on planet earth. And unlike every clock we use, the circadian clock is designed to be set properly every day. Uh, again, the timing, information and energy from the solar cycle. One of my favorite words is zeitgeber or time giver. There's two major zeitgebers. The major one is the light that enters your eyes and hits your skin. Uh, that sets your super cosmetic nucleus and that master clock then talks to all your peripheral clocks. And you know, the cardiovascular system, there's many different uh, physiologic processes that happen throughout the day based off of your circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms and really the rhythmicity of, of your your day determines an enormous amount about how you feel, right? All of our hormones and neurotransmitters are released in different quantities at different times of day in response to circadian signals. This cascade begins with melatonin. Most people only know two things about melatonin. It comes in a pill and it makes them sleep at night. And this is basically just enough information to get into a lot of trouble. Everybody thinks of melatonin uh, as being the, the hormone of sleep, but when you understand what melatonin does, it's a, it's a mitochondrial stabilizer. Melatonin is the master hormone and neurotransmitter of circadian biology, and its release and its um, production and how it's trafficked around the body are completely controlled by light. And what melatonin does in the body is it synchronizes your circadian rhythms and it controls when and how much of different hormones and neurotransmitters are released. Light plays a critical role in, in altering those hormones and neurotransmitters independently of melatonin, but really melatonin is the master regulator for the system. Um, it has profound impacts on systemic health, and that's why all the chronic diseases are associated with a, a cir circadian malfunction of melatonin. And what I, what I think is most important for people to know about melatonin is that it's actually made in your skin and in your eye in response to red and infrared light during the day. Many of your other hormones and neurotransmitters are produced in response to certain frequencies of visible light. When you have blue light exposure in the morning, particularly with red light present, blue light on the eye and the skin photo entrains your circadian clock. It turns on the hypothalamic pituitary axis. That's why all the hormones at panels, we see spikes of the normal hormones in the morning because that's when they're designed to be turned on. And then once you get you know, the UVA in the environment, it turns off those things because then we're designed to actually start our, you know, our active day. So the most important thing that I stress with patients about their daily routine as far as their light environment goes is really that they, their most sensitive periods for disruption of their circadian rhythms, which can then translate into serious issues with how they feel and how they function, is that their circadian rhythms are most sensitive to changes at the beginning of the day and at the end, at dawn and at dusk. Those are the times of day when it's most important for them to be getting a certain amount of natural light. I'm outside every single morning. I recommend every patient be outside, no matter how cold it is, and let the natural light actually hit your eyes unfiltered through glasses or contact lenses. How long? As long as possible. But usually tell people, you know, 10, 15 minutes to kind of get started for the day. You know, if you're going to get asked, well, can I watch it through a window? That's not optimal. The, the glass is going to filter out a lot of the red light and you're going to get a mismatch of the, uh, the blue and red spectrum. So if you're going to watch it through a window, you need to open the window and get the light through the screen or a correct you know, car window. Beyond that, I want them to be paying attention to getting outside at different times of day, particularly to get, for example, ultraviolet light um, on their skin and then ultraviolet light in their eye invisible light in their eye is another key component of basic circadian health. You know, if they got an indoor job, do the best that they can to get outside throughout the day and take a little, you know, sun break. Just pretend like it's a smoke break and you go outside for, you know, five minutes, soak in some sun, you know, kind of download the information to reset your clocks and go back inside. One of the things that they don't realize is how much darker the indoor environment is, no matter where they are, no matter what time of year it is, than the out of doors. And Really, one of the things that we know from circadian biology is that the greater the intensity of the light that's hitting your eye, 
the higher your levels of hormones and neurotransmitters. And we've known this for years. As I said before, we've got an epidemic of people dealing with low levels of hormones and neurotransmitters. And they're all on these medications and supplements and drugs and treatments to try and boost these levels. And many of them are, are operating and living in complete ignorance of the fact that, the, that light is one of the fundamental determinants of these levels. When you don't get a proper solar signal, you can't produce melatonin, dopamine, serotonin. And when, and when you start doing that, over time, you will begin to have neuropsychiatric, neuroendocrine abnormalities, among other things. Beyond that, I pay attention to what their lighting environment is at night. When you talk to people who are chronically fatigued, a lot of the time what you're finding is that they have terrible lighting environments at night. The more they control their lighting environment at night, the better their sleep is gonna be and the better they're gonna feel, the deeper their sleep is gonna be and the more rested they're going to be when they wake up. I personally, my place looks like a submarine at nighttime. I have just red lights everywhere. And then once the evening comes around, you know, really kind of mitigate the screen time as best as possible. The name of the game after dark is limiting their exposure, particularly to blue and green light, because those are the two frequent or the frequencies of light that really prevent melatonin from doing what it's supposed to do, which is to come out into the bloodstream after three to four hours, absent blue and green light and turn on all the renovation, rejuvenation, and repair processes of the body. And overwhelmingly in the literature, what we see is people who have premature cardiovascular disease, cancers, dementia, metabolic syndrome, obesity, diabetes, I could go on all day, have low levels of melatonin in their body, period. That means that they, some combination of they don't have the nutrients in order to make the melatonin or they are living in the wrong lighting environment and it's shutting down their melatonin production. So the long story short on that is basically melatonin is really important for life and light controls it. So if you don't get exposure in the morning, intermittent exposure during the middle of the day and then exposure at night, you miss that time. And when you miss it, I mean, you're gonna miss it some days because of the modern world, but when you miss it consistently, you're going to get sick and that, and that's really why i see what i see in my clinic it's what i experience personally